Good evening. On July 5th at 3.03 in the morning, I woke up startled, sat straight up and said, something is wrong, something is not right. My heart was palpating and I was scared, terrified. I thought I was dying. I was almost right because at 3.02 that morning, gunshots rang out in Boston and my son was murdered. Tonight will be the first time that I've spoken publicly in this kind of forum about Joshua's death. And I wanted to do it with you all because you have held me so much in love. And I wanted to say thank you. Now I'm a grieving mother who's lost a child to gun violence. So I have no expectations of getting through this without tears, but that's okay. I feel them welling up already, so don't be alarmed. You don't have to be, you, don't, you should not fear them or be offended by my grief. Today, what I had hoped to show you was my son's video to invite you to go beyond the obvious, to look, in, to look deep into the words, the images and the thought. I wanted to invite you to put aside your biases to notice what is being triggered in you and put that aside or manage it as we explore the life and struggle of a, of a young black male living in the city. A black man who loved music, loved his mother, loved his baby girl, and since he was a child, wanted to be a rapper. Now I'm a learning fellow going on to my second year. I've done many sermons over that time and I've often recorded them um, so that they can be scrutinized. But recently and increasingly we've been encouraged to do them live like I am tonight, um, which is far more difficult, but it, it, it is a challenge I've decided to take on. Leading up to this sermon, I've never gotten so many calls. I got a call about the reflection question, which was rich initially rewritten in a way that I thought lost its meanings and we talked about that and I think we got it right. I got a call after someone viewed my video saying that um, we needed to put disclaimers in because he uses the N word twice. Um, and they, they wanted to put disclaimers in because they wanted to protect you, the viewers, I think. I had wanted us to wrestle together with the question of what happens to young black men when their dreams die? What alternatives do they have? How much of themselves do they have to compromise? How many values do they have to concede in response to societal pressure? If they can't run fast, jump high, throw a ball, catch a ball, throw a ball into a hoop, um, what alternatives do we give them? How do they start using their creativity? When does it become subversive? We started with Alicia Keys singing, lift every voice and sing. It was for the NFL. And in the background, you saw black men pictured. They were all being helpful. They were all smiling. They look healthy. And then suddenly you saw Colin Kaepernick kneeling. The initial response from the football watching audience, mostly white, was to criticize and to seek to ostracize him. In the beginning, the TV networks didn't even show what he was doing. Only as the print media began to talk about it, did the TV media pick it up. The networks started to put disclaimers, warning their viewer that black men were kneeling in protest while the national anthem was playing. Colin Kaepernick creatively used the media. It was subversive. Now, what is subversive? Wikipedia defines subversive as a process by which the values and principles of a system in place are contradicted or reversed in an attempt to transform the established social order and a structure of power, authority, hierarchy, and social norms. Colin was subversive. He challenged the social norm. He wanted to give out a message and he, paid, he ultimately paid a huge price. In order to get this message out, 
He sacrificed his standing as a pro football co quarterback. He sacrificed his livelihood. And although in the end, people joined him in kneeling with arms linked, he became a target of racial angst and was marginalized except maybe by black people. My son Joshua was no Colin Kaepernick, but he knew poetry and he knew prose. At his funeral, his high school teacher came up to me and said two things. Joshua had saved her life. That is a story about her choking because she had taken a mouthful of, of vitamins and he gave her the Heimlich and said that because of him, um, she has two children now. But she also said that Joshua was the only kid she taught who liked the Bronte sisters, the Bronte sisters. Imagine my surprise to know that my young black man read Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights and, and understood it. He learned how to read and write poetry and use it to create lyrics, poetries, and songs, which ended up in his video. The video I was going to show tonight was his best so far. In it, he describes what happens to a young black man who is talented, who dreams big, but his day-to-day -day life gets in the way of his achieving his dreams. He talks about police stopping for driving while black. He talks about being beat up by those police, body blows that don't show. His lyrics were informed by experiences of going into stores and being followed simply because he was a young black man. Included also maybe was an encounter that he had in work that he felt tested him as a black man. I remember that day, Joshua came home shaking, anger welled up inside of him, having to deal with a racist coworker. He responded that he wanted to, be, to lash out in a loud and aggressive way, but he knew he would put that in his livelihood in jeopardy. He came home pacing, asking me, mom, what would you do? What would you do? However he handled it, despite this, his boss told me he was a great worker. And on the day of his funeral, he shut down the whole carpentry shop and they came to his service. I'm told that Joshua used to sit with his friend's mothers for hours and listen to their worries and concerns. He, was, he knew how to be a best friend to young women and bro with young men, and Joshua could hug. He'd come home at night and we talked and I listened to what worried him and he hugged me. And his hugs enveloped me, but, but were, they were like they were when he was a child. And then there were, those, there were still those moments when he approached me with, mommy, can you help me with this? Joshua was a new father. He was five, he has a five month old daughter, Riley, and he loved her deeply. And now he is gone. Gone because someone got a gun and shot him because he didn't like him. Guns are way too easy. They don't allow for a cooling off period. And that's a sermon for another time. After Josh's death, his friends came to pay their respects. I called them my kids because I've known them since they're a kid. They're now grown men with children. They're hardworking men who after um, graduating from a really good high school, now work restocking at Walmart, CVS, and Dunkin' Donuts, but they have a dream. I have to admit, I didn't get Josh's video at first. It really wasn't until after he died that I gained some understanding of what it meant and the people who taught me what it meant were those young black men he grew up with. They told me, Ma, Ma, Josh was great. This song here, oh, Ma, this song here. They flipped on their phone and collectively they started to sway and dance and sing the song. And I watched and I listened to them and I actually thought they had gone crazy, but I didn't understand what was going on. And I replayed the video and I began to understand. I think what appealed to them is he was telling their story, the story of their struggle, growing up black male with a dream deferred. Josh was my only son, a light put out too early. He made me laugh and cry. 
I'm so proud of the man he has become. He helped his friends with their music and they all bragged that Josh was going into the studio with him. Now I'm not gonna show the video tonight because I will not put a warning label on my sons telling his and his friend's life story. If you want to see it, look on YouTube. His name is Pyrex Jordan. The video is entitled, I Had. He has two there. I Had is his best video. It is the one he did, um, um, the is the last one he did. I will caution you that there is a third video listed. Someone trying to make a name for himself filmed my son's death and posted it on YouTube. Um, entitled Death of a Boston Rapper. I have not seen it, and the kids tell me it's awful. I don't recommend it. I invite you to look at Joshua's video. Listen to what he says. Listen to him describe what he felt his choices were. Look at what is printed on his t-shirts that they're wearing in the video. Let me give you a hint. It says free, but not free. And it says, all incomes matter. Wonder where the title came from. I had. Spoiler alert. He tells you in the beginning. He says, I had a dream. That dream was to become a rapper. Then he demonstrates what struggles he had to live with to try to live into that dream. He was creative and subversive. Black people's liberation has always been through their craft, whether it's cooking, sewing, dancing, or singing. I cannot censor my son's work. I will not put disclaimers on how young Black males communicate to the world. The way they do it is non-conforming. It is difficult for some of us to hear. It is subversive. I, enjoy, I invite you to listen with an open heart and an open mind. May it be so. Amen. Ashe.